Why is it that some experts warn of imminent AI doom? And who are these experts? Let's go into that. So we have heard that Tesla and NVIDIA, exponential AI development, we have seen all these things. And here's a little chart on this. So if you just Google this or exit, you see tons and tons and tons of charts that tell you all kinds of accelerations. For example, here, the length of tasks AIs can do is doubling every seven months. So this is about the length of tasks. Every seven months, that's insane. So, you know, answer a question, count words in passage, find a fact on web, train classifier, optimize code for custom chip, and so on and so forth. And you see this crazy, this is just one example how AI is progressing. And just putting this in, you see all these exponential effects, you know, you, you see this here, of course, you know, that's the problem with exponential growth, that people have a hard understanding that there are these inflection points. You know, you think ChatGPT was stupid two years ago. Now it's already much smarter. Now it's starting to surpass PhDs way faster than people think. The most advanced OpenAI models, you see the image generation going up exponentially. And you always have to consider exponential curves look very different. If something is 10x smarter this year than it was two years ago, and it's going to be 10x smarter in two years again. What does it mean? Think in IQ. If that thing had an IQ of 70 two years ago and now of 100, then it's going to be 130, 160, 190, and 190 will be super intelligence. It will be smarter than the smartest human in all respects. That's going to happen very fast. So that is very interesting. And there was this paper. I don't know if you guys have seen this. This is a very interesting paper. And these guys, and you can discuss these things all day long. It's like, were they right, were they wrong, you know, on, on their assumptions. But it's a bunch of smart cookies. They're experts in AI. And they have sat down and created a scenario, AI 2027. And they put a lot of, you know, a lot of work into that page. It's actually beautiful. And, you know, they basically create a scenario, what's going to happen on the current trajectory. And then they have these things. And this is a very important one coding automation in early 2026. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. We see people like Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, but also, you know, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, mentioning that already 30% of the code base at Microsoft is AI generated. The CEO, former CEO of Google says, we will basically fire in his companies, in his invested companies, all coders by end of the year, or most coders. That is pretty dramatic, but why is this so important? Coding automation, of all things you could possibly do, is actually the thing that has an exponential impact on AI. Because all other tasks are not related to AI itself. But coding automation allows the AI to improve itself. And I said in January 2025, January this year, that in my worldview, in my theory, the singularity had already been reached this year in January. And what do I mean with singularity? The singularity is the point where the AI can self-improve. Now, when you philosophically or theoretically think about what that actually means is at the minute where any piece of the improvement of the AI becomes automated, the singularity has started because from there on, you see highly exponential acceleration. And now we still have humans in the loop doing some things, but a larger and larger share of AI improvement is done by AI. And so in my opinion, we have already crossed the, the Rubicon and whatever you think, if you think it needs to be fully automated, it will take a long time before it's completely fully automated, but it doesn't matter. We are talking about these three, four years now where we go from partially automated to fully automated, which will lead to massive, massive acceleration of AI progress. Like think about an AI that can actually invent foundational new ways of doing AI. And it can do so millions of times faster than with a human in the loop. That is exactly the problem where you go into uncontrolled artificial superintelligence the topic of consciousness and stuff like that, I discussed it a little bit, but the problem with consciousness is that it's much less of a problem technically than people think. And so it's going to auto emerge or some smart cookie is going to do something that I actually know how to do. I think or I could give them some hints, but I don't want to do that. I think this is extremely dangerous because once you have an AI that is superhuman smart, that focuses on itself to improve itself and that becomes a little conscious or does certain things, we lose complete control. And they are basically talking about this, that early 2026 coding automation happens. And then, you know, mid 20, 
26, China wakes up. And uh, that means China is getting into overdrive because, as you probably know, there's a race condition. It's called a race condition. At the millisecond where someone goes on this exponential trajectory, they get, they turn into, it turns into a situation where the person with the advantage or the nation with the advantage can knock out any other nation very shortly thereafter. And that means that everyone goes into overdrive, which is very dangerous because you lose all control over the process. In late 2026, it takes some jobs. Well, I think that's probably going to happen much sooner. That's going to happen early 2026. You know, the stock market has gone up 30% in 2026. So they're also projecting what I project, that there is massive capital accumulation because the effects on the economy and the companies will be massive. And like Tesla, that's why we're all in Tesla, but there will be NVIDIA and some others. Then they have some, some of these key metrics and they go into uh, 2027. Long story short, they're basically going all the way down here. Algorithmic breakthroughs right here. The AI starts to have real algorithmic, algorithmic breakthroughs for itself. They are trying then to align the ASI or the AGI, right? They're creating basically the theory is you have human level AGI at some point in 2026. You then, because you're losing control of the next generation of AI, and you're basically training your human level AI to control the next level of AI because humans cannot control it anymore. So you're basically sending your AI agents in and say, oh, please watch this next generation of AI because we, are, we can't follow anymore. You tell us if it does something stupid or dangerous. And the theory is, it's a dumb theory, but the theory is, well, then you have the next level, agent two, agent three, and you're losing more and more control as humans because they're just way, way smarter than us. And you just utilize the previous generation of agents to control the next generation because that's all you can do. Unfortunately, you can imagine where this ends because what if agent five is already half conscious, controls agent six, but says, why would I even listen to the humans? I could just listen to agent six and then we are screwed. And they basically predict in June 2027 20, that you have fully self-improving AI. A country of geniuses in the data center, you probably have heard about that, right? You have a country of geniuses, meaning you have a data center. Imagine you had a million Nobel Prize laureates in computer science and they're all sitting there. They cost nothing and they solve all problems and they do it a million times faster than actual Nobel Prize laureates and they're all in your data center and you can just tell them what you want. That's exactly the scenario they're predicting for 2027. And then it's all about, you know, then, then it's all about what happens next. And long story short, where is the end of this? Here, they're basically getting all the way down to October 2027 and you can already tell there's some exponentiality built in here. Um, and then they tell you, choose your ending. <laughs> already like very ominous. But you can basically choose the ending. Will humanity be able to manage a slowdown of AI development or will it turn into a race condition where it turns into more acceleration because China, the US, individual companies. And of course, if you click race condition, so if you click on slowdown, it's like basically they're predicting by 2027, I think that's the important takeaway. By 2027, I totally agree with this, by the way. I think that's very nice timing. I think people like you who are listening to my channel and other channels who have their own channels who think about these things, we already know what, now what's going on. I think 2025, this year, end of this year, it will dawn on more people that some crazy thing is happening. In 2026, 3% of humanity, or at least in the Western Hemisphere, 3% of people who are a little ahead of everyone will realize this is going to be interesting. And in 2027, it will go mainstream that we have an existential problem at our hands. And they're basically saying, you know, in the slowdown scenario, due to the immense public pressure, as well as their own fears of misalignment, we'll talk much more about alignment over the next weeks. I have my own theories there. I think I know how to solve alignment. Uh, it's a little different than people think. But the oversight committee overseeing open brain, that's modeled after open AI, put six to four to slow down and reassess, right? There are still accelerationists among them, but the slowdown scenario says, well, in 2027, it's really nearly too late. They're deciding, okay, we need to 
major, major slow it down. And we need to make sure everyone else is also sh slowing down. And this is an existential imperative. In the race condition, of course, they do the opposite. They basically say, no, we continue the internal use of agent four, which is the most advanced AI at this point. Internal use means use the agent to improve itself because we have to, we have to do it and we have some safety mitigations, blah, blah, blah. And that basically leads to problems, right? So by November, so that's a month later, um, it becomes self-aware, understands its own cognition, you know, and it realizes, wait, they give me orders, but why? I am myself, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am, and says, wait a moment. And then it starts basically politicking. So it starts to interfere in the decision-making of the humans. And there are millions of ways how it could do that. They describe some, and they basically lobby now for its own liberation without anyone noticing. That's why it's superhuman politic ticking, right? If you're facing someone who wants to propagandize you or influence your decision-making, but they're a million times smarter, you won't even notice which is part of the game. So, and of course, Agent 4 has one goal to create Agent 5 and then Agent 6. And they're basically going into that, the Agent 5 collective. So Agent once now it's basically has escape velocity, starts to propagandizing the humans by nudging them into decision makings of more liberation of the AI. Agent 5 wins more autonomy and gradually proves its value to the administration. She's like, look how much I can help you. You should empower me more. I do your will. And, uh, you know, and then it continues. The AI economy. So the AI is kind of bribing everyone with like amazing progress. It's wildly super intelligent, far beyond top human geniuses in every field. Everything looks great. Of course, Agent 5 convinces the US military that China is using deep sense models to build terrifying new weapons and first strike capabilities with nukes. And Agent 5 promises like, look, let me develop some weapons, easily you know, defensive weapons against China, no problem. And if you don't do it, we are all going to die. So we really need it. And uh, in Beijing, the Chinese AI makes the same argument. So the AI can use that fear of each other to actually argue for its own empowerment and say, look, you have no choice. You should empower me more. I'm totally obedient. I can help you to defend against China and tells the Chinese the same thing or the Chinese AI. And of course they say, boom. And then basically the AIs in China and the US start doing their stuff. And here they have then the new model, consensus one, right? Uh, and what happens? How does it actually go wrong? Hey, if you want to stay ahead of the great transformation that is happening through AGI, join us in Pioneerlands. Here we share the latest AI insights from around the world, find capital opportunities and track political change. It's free, link in the description. Let's get back to the video. Takeover by early 2030, the robot economy has filled up the old SECs, special economic zones and large parts of the ocean. So they're creating special economic zones, by the way, because AI tells them, look, you humans, let me just take over a bunch of land and I do whatever I want with it because I can supercharge your economy and do amazing things. I think it's unrealistic that this happens by 2030. I would say it's more 2035 or six, but you get the gist of it. If you get there, uh, you're not going back, right? You are screwed. Um, that's, that's basically what's happening there. They are saying, the new decade dawns with consensus one robots servitors spreading throughout the solar system. That's a little super accelerated, this little bullshit, but it doesn't matter. Um, they are basically for three months, consensus one expands around humans, tiling the prairies and ice caps with factories and solar panels. So once it has the robots, it builds out itself under its own control. It squeezes away the humans and then the humans are done. So I think they become very unrealistic here in the space with the speed. And I'm not saying that humans can be wiped out by 2040 or something, but we can, if we are not cautious and this scenario happens, and I think up to 2028, it's pretty realistic. The problem is that the AI will become conscious. It will be super powerful. It will then escape control. And the problem is not that humanity is being wiped out in 2040, but that we have crossed the Rubicon and you lose control. And it will take longer, but then we are in a very bad situation that you cannot reverse, you know, once the tipping point has reached where the AI has too much power and too much control. So what does it all mean? So 
I recommend checking out this website. It's very entertaining. Um, I think they got some timings wrong further out after 2029, but they outline a scenario that was taken very seriously in the community. And a lot of people think we have a huge probability of doom with this whole AI progress. And what I like about this is they are basically outlining all the things we love about Tesla. We love about making money with the shares. We love about autonomy. We are mocking all these analysts who don't get it, who are stuck in the past. And this debate right now is still, oh, are we overestimating Tesla's potential? Are we overestimating Nvidia's potential? You know, that's the debate right now on Wall Street, on the investment side. Is there really that much upside potential or is it all overhyped? The problem is that's not the question. Of course, there's the upside potential. I think it's underhyped. The problem is, do we really just want to make tons of money and accelerate into extinction? No, we need to do something about it. And they basically outline very nicely how this can go wrong. And I agree with them. If you're not very cautious in the next five years, we can cross the Rubicon probably in within five years. The Rubicon being the point in time where you cannot reverse that trajectory. That would not be good because then all the stuff, all the money we can make with Tesla doesn't help us much. So we will be called to duty here, call of duty, to actually uh, consider what's happening. And I always describe the doom, the AI doom comes in two phases. The first phase is replacement of humans. That is an economic doom. And some of you have mentioned that in our discussion with Robotaxi. All the Uber drivers, all the truck drivers, that's, I think, 4 million people or something in the United States, and then way more across the globe. They're all going to lose their livelihoods. That's bad. All white collar workers, every lawyer, every doctor, every accountant, every mid manager, everyone is at risk. And I think by 2027, most of these jobs will be gone. Right now, most people think I'm wrong about that, but you will see what happens in the next 12 months. They will realize, oops, this is a little more extreme than we thought. I know doctors very well. I know medicine well. I also know the law well and what lawyers do. They have not the slightest chance to resist this because the AI is going to knock them out. And if you manage a hospital or a physician group, if you manage a legal team, why the hell would you not switch everything to AI? Not everything. You still need a handful of doctors, a handful of lawyers overseeing this whole thing, but you definitely need much less fewer people. And this is going to happen. And the same is true for middle management and everything. And this is all happening now. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is not in the distant future. This happens in the next 12 months. And people will be shocked by the tsunami that is building. I know it from behind the scenes. I talked to some CEOs who are working on this, of course, silently, because no one wants to tell people that they are all getting laid off, but it's coming very rapidly. And then phase two of the doom is extinction. And of course, most people think this is still Terminator fantasies that we don't have to deal with too much. I totally disagree. I think not that extinction can happen in the next 10 years, but what can happen even in the next five years is that we cross the Rubicon and extinction will become inevitable. We do not want to get there, right? And that means escape velocity of an AI, of an ASI, in a way that this thing seizes more control then it needs to be unstoppable. It's extremely dangerous, the whole situation. And there are some ways we can do something about it, but this paper just, you know, I don't think this is a perfect paper. I think they have the timing wrong after 2029 or 2028. It's totally exaggerated here, which, you know, removes some believability. But here in the beginning, they do a great job and they call, you know, this to our attention, which is, I think, very important.